Good morning, Facebook family and friends. Today is Tuesday, December the 6th, 2016. I'm continuing the series about Earl's and I 20 year relationship. Um, in the last video, um, I talked about HIV and AIDS and had a, had a significant impact on our relationship and could be the reason why Earl and I um, stayed in a relationship for so long because of our concerns about HIV and AIDS and uh, in, our, in the community, which was killing people daily in our community at that time. Um, we were both HIV negative and we were both still HIV negative today. And so we, we were, but in the last video, Earl wanted to, us to have a sexual relationship without condoms, which was very uncomfortable, uncomfortable for me at that time because I'd never done such. I always used condoms when having sex. Uh, but I had had many guys who wanted to be in relationships with me and they didn't want to use condoms and I terminated the possible relationships because I just was not comfortable not using condoms in that era. So Earl and I made the decision that we were going to move forward and we were not going to use condoms because that was something that we thought would bring us closer together. And maybe it did, maybe it did bring us closer together. I, I can't really, I don't know the answer to that. Um... But when you've been with somebody for so long, from 1996 through 2016, um, I can't say for sure if using condoms or not using condoms made us closer. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, so I think when people make the decision not to use condoms, they need to take it very seriously. Uh, when we decided we were not going to use condoms, that we were going to be in a relationship together, then... I wanted to make sure that we were in this for the long haul. That this wasn't going to be something that six months later or a year later we were going to be going on about our business. Uh, the first two years of our relationship was very... And I, mean, I, can, I can honestly say the first two years of Earl's and our relationship was what I call the honeymoon period. And we had a great... I remember those first two years, clearly. Um, it wasn't until after the first two years and when we started living together, we had so much pressure from outside sources... Well, a couple, a couple of things happened. I started a construction company. I bought a house. Um, I bought two houses. We started, I mean, we, our income increased significantly. And I think a lot of that played a part in, in the problems that we had. There's a song by Sinead O'Connor where she says, success has made a failure of my home. And money and success can easily can easily cause very serious issues in a relationship if you're not careful. But there's always these outside people, jealous, envy, hate, family members, friends. So if you, unless you've never been there, you probably won't understand why I keep bringing up these outside sources. Because all our problems that we had in our relationship, all, every problem we had was from somebody outside the relationship. We couldn't create our own problems within the relationship. It was always these outside people, this person, that person. My, at one point in time, good example, we had, my mother was cleaning, my mother had a cleaning company. So the arrangement was that she would clean the house for us. And at first that was fine. We, she'd come in, she'd come in and clean with her crew and everything was great. But then mama started leaving Bible scriptures around the house. She started leaving quotes. So she would see Earl and say little quotations like, we all having problems because there's no such thing. Because there's, there's no such thing as Adam and Eve or Adam and Steve. But she denies this to this day. But I don't think you're lying on my mother. She made that statement. Because I saw that she would come in with these Bible scriptures. She would come in and take uh, magazines and artwork that she didn't like. And she'd take them and stick them in drawers and all that. So she was in there being a busybody instead of cleaning the damn house. She in there trying to influence the house with her opinions. She was constantly there. Every time I would come to the house, she was over with a girl praying. I'm like, what are y'all praying about? What is going on? My mother really shouldn't have been there cleaning that house. But at that time, of course, being young, she had the cleaning company. It just seemed easier. She come in and cook. She would come in and clean the house. We ended up having to terminate our relationship with Mama's cleaning company, get us some Mexicans who barely spoke English. That worked out much better. To this day, I found that when you have people cleaning your home, they don't, they, they, they don't need to know the English language. They just know it needs to know how to scrub, clean, and vacuum. That's all that is required. Make up beds and fold clothes. 
So once we got with a mama, and uh, my mother continued to be a busybody for quite some time. I, I remember at one point, my mother was having private conversations with Earl on his cell, cell, cell phone, and I didn't know this. Um, you know, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Now, my mother's intentions, she thought she was being good by talking to Earl, but my mother was creating some serious problems within this relationship. My mother ain't had no business talking to Earl on his cell phone about me. That did not, she crossed some boundaries there. Of course, she, she denies it to this day. I didn't do that. Um, Mama, please. You did it. So this went on for a while before I found out. There were a lot of things Earl wouldn't tell me because he was afraid that if he said something to me, I would go off on certain people. You're going you gonna to cuss your mama out. Yeah, my mama deserved to go cuss it out for t sitting on the phone having a conversation about me behind my back and, he, and you taking your... The met, you taking a phone call that did you have it with her and it's twisted all up into your head and all of a sudden... You know, I was always made out to be the villain in all this shit. Family members, friends. And it, and, and it boiled down to what I said about money. When people think you got money and you're in control of the money, they try to come at you in all types of ways. So for some reason, when people look at girls in our relationship, they kind of look at, well, Walter's the one who's financially in control of the money. No, I wasn't in financially in control of the money, but that's what they thought. So... Earl worked his own job. He had an income. I didn't know he, what he, he did. Whatever he wanted to do with it. So the money we worked together on the construction company went to a pot and me. From the outside looking in, a lot of people assume, well, Walter and Earl got all this damn money and they doing this and they doing that. But, they didn't, but the truth of the matter was we were in debt and we were paying bills and we were working our fucking asses off. We never really even took vacations because we were working so hard. And that was a huge mistake when I look back on that. We should have been traveling, doing all kinds of stuff. But we too busy doing a raggedy, termite-infested house. The Mexicans who couldn't speak English at Home Depot. It was a nightmare. It went on forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. I'm serious. When you own your own business, you just have to be prepared to put up with a lot of shit from workers, family members. For It's just, and they don't get it because if they're not there helping you, which none of them were... That would have been, a, in a perfect world, it would have been nice if my family members jumped in there um, supporting us 100% working with but, you know, it didn't happen, though. They were all able-bodied grown adults. You think they came over there? I think some, I think for a lot of them, they just didn't want to work with me. Well, here I was under a great deal of stress trying to make this shit work. Trying to make sure that these houses were able to get done, renovated, and sold. That was not easy work, so I was just, it was, just a, it was just a nightmare. And I don't think people understand that. So, if you're in the middle of a nightmare, you can't walk around with a big old smile on your face being nice. People, Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing? Yeah, great. Yeah, I'm doing okay. No, you kind of wake up like, oh, shit, these niggas. What do they want? Come with their hand out. Nobody showed, which is strange. None of my family members showed up there and said, Walter, show me what you're doing. What can I do to help you? I want to be a part of this. And none of them. No cousins. No brothers and sisters. No uncles and aunts. I had one uncle who was an electrician. We kind of used him like a part-time electrician. Everybody knew what we were doing. They saw what we were doing. Do you think they came over there to help the sis be a part of it? No. But one thing they did do is what? Give me, 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 give me. I want something. Give me, give me, give me, give me. But they want to come over and say, Walter, can we help you with something? That's why I can't stand niggas. Can't stand them. You see us over here struggling with this mess. You see the hard work that we doing. You see what's going on. But instead of you showing up here saying, let me help you. I want to be involved. Let me make some, let me earn an honest living with doing what you're doing, Walter, and assist you. Mm -mm. The hands out. And then family members and then friends be like, why is your family struggling like that and you guys are doing so well over here? Why aren't you helping them? You should help them. And I learned something. You can't help ungrateful niggas. You cannot, write this down, today's lesson, you cannot help ungrateful niggas. You can't. Because they don't care. I had a whole bunch of ungrateful ass niggas around me. As you can see, 
I got two dogs running around here in Black Santa over the corner. High now, he quiet. He's sleeping right now. I learned a lot from that construction company. And if you're when you're in a gay relationship, people don't have any respect for that relationship because they don't see it as real. Or you and Earl just shack it up. So there was no gay marriage back then. So they didn't respect our relationship. Gay or straight, niggas did not respect that relationship. They just saw it as me and Earl living together. They didn't see us as being in a loving relationship. So they had no respect for that relationship. That's why you gotta keep them niggas away. They're too ignorant. Bam. Stay outside your house. Write niggas on a piece of paper in that band symbol and put a big board in front of your house. People, they have to stay away. Keep them niggas away, your life will be a whole lot better. Wish I had known that in my 20s. Keep the niggas away, your life will be so much more peaceful. Your relationship will thrive without them niggas around. And I had a whole bunch of niggas around. Once I got rid of their asses, and I'm, and we'll not get to that later on in the, in the video series. How Valencia got rid of these ignorant ass niggas that was thinking about they had to go. Friends, family members, neighbor, all them niggas had to go. I had enough. As you grow older, you become less. I, I love when people say, "Well, to you, bitter." No, I didn't become bitter. Bitter. I'm not bitter. I just don't want to be bothered. Because I've learned, no matter, I brought houses for people. Houses, cars, rented apartments, bought furniture, clothes, shoes. Who does this? I did. Bought your house, help you pay for it, bought the car for you, make you the payments and the insurance on my insurance. You driving the car, you drive, you know, you're living in an apartment or a home, I'm paying for I furnished it. You didn't have any money for furniture. I furnished it, had it delivered to your house, I did all this stuff. It's ungrateful niggers. They had nothing nice to say about me. They didn't have nothing nice to say about Walter Lee Hampton the second. No, I'm not bitter. Mm -mm. I just don't want to bother you niggas. I've learned. Yeah, I see y'all struggling. I'm sorry. I know y'all need some stuff. I know. I know you could use some clothes and shoes and coats and jackets and a couch to sit on. I do understand. I know I got a couple of couches over here and a couple of TVs and stuff. And I said, I just bought another TV for my bedroom. I know. Yeah. I get it. But I'm not helping ungrateful niggas no more. That phase of my life is over. I don't have a problem telling you you are an ungrateful nigga. Get the fuck out of my face. I'm done. Too much damage has been done. Too much hurting. Too much pain caused by people who are supposed to be on your side. I've never had anybody pay a car note for me. Or pay my rent. Or pay my mortgage payment. Or buy me clothes. Or buy me a couch. Buy me a car. Buy me a house. God, I wish someone would do any of that stuff. I'd be so grateful. I'd be on there every day. What can I do for you? Thank you. Gosh, I'm so, I'm, what, wow, how did I, what did I do to deserve this? But see, ungrateful niggas feel like you have to do this stuff for them. And when you stop doing stuff for them, they go on a rampage. They get angry. My family used to say, why are Earl living in that house with you? We should be living there. Why should you be living in my house with me versus my partner, man I'm in love with? Why should I be have you and your badass children sitting up in my damn house, living here? This doesn't make any sense to me. Why don't you have your own place? We help you get a place. You moved out. My sister used to move from Michigan, from Indiana to Michigan to Mississippi. She was always on the go. You haul, you running. You get tired of this shit. We just put you in an apartment. Why are you moving? We can get your nice house. We can brought it. It's nice. You living in it. What is the problem? 
ungrateful, and destructive, and they will destroy your relationship. They will destroy your relationship if given the opportunity. I said, if I ever entered into a relationship again, my family and friends, the few family, the few friends I have left, my family members I deal with, they would not know who I was dating or what was going on. It's none of their business. I've learned my lesson. I've learned people are not going to be happy for you because you're in a relationship and they sit in some place looking miserable. Don't expect them to be happy for you because you're happy. Don't expect them to show up at your wedding and glad and happy because you get married and they have nobody to go home to. Don't expect that. Expect hate. Expect envy. Expect jealousy. And if you don't expect that, you'll get caught up in a storm of foolishness that will cause great harm to your relationship. And it'll be caused by the people that you think love you, your family members and friends. I've seen this. I've seen it in my own two eyeballs. I've witnessed this. I've seen this mess. I could tell you a million stories. But we're not, I'm not going to dwell too much longer on family and friends. This video wasn't really supposed to be about that. But you, I just want y'all to understand that if you're in a relationship, be careful of the people that you allow around you and your partner, your husband and wife. Because sometimes you might think, well, this is my sister. This is my brother. This is my mother. My, my father. They, they should be happy for me. Not, but they're not always going to be happy for you. So you have to look for the signs. Look for the signs to find out why they're not happy for you. And find out what could be going on. It's just you won't know. Anyway, I'm going to continue the series tomorrow with about the situation with Earl and I. But like I said, and I hope you all understand that, that the reason I'm doing this video is I hope to educate people and help other people who are in relationships. I'm about to get into relationships. Be careful of the people you allow in your life, the people that you think are your road dogs and your friends, your family members. People who they can cause a, a great deal of harm, irreparable harm to your relationship. And then just sit back and laugh as you, everything implodes all around you. That's how they operate. Haters don't hate. That's their job. Anyway, today it is Tuesday, December 6, 2016. I'm out of here. I got to get, get dressed and prepare to take care of some stuff here now. So I'm take, I might choose another video later. We'll see. All right. I'm out. Bye.